Hi, I like to create those Lichtenberger figures. They are made by placing very high voltage across wood and burning traces in it with electricity. So I need to make very high voltage. This can be potentially done by the transformers commonly found at home. There are these old style wall adapters that contain a transformer. But these things nowadays are being replaced by the much more efficient switching mode wall adapters. So time is short. For the price of a lifetime of inefficiency and shame, you can get your own. But wait, I'll throw in a second one if you promise to jump off a bridge. We need to learn to use energy more efficiently, and this is not one of them. But every technology starts from somewhere. This kind of wall adapter starts with a transformer that reduces the AC voltage. And then there is the full bridge rectifier that generates a DC output. Sometimes they also add a voltage regulator at the end to make the output level more stable. Measuring the AC voltages at the input of your Make sure not to short high voltage with your probes. Now at the input, we get around 120 volt AC as we expect. And at the output, we have 7.6 or close to 8 volt AC. This means that the primary to secondary number of turn ratio is around 15. And you know what it means? If I flip the connections of primary and secondary, instead of 15 times reduction, I'll get 15 times more voltage, around 1,800 volt AC. Let's do it. I cut the rectifier circuit from the output and solder the power cable to the secondary. But let me remind you, if 120 volt AC can potentially kill you, 1800 volt AC will definitely kill you, and since you won't have time to turn it off, it will kill every single family member that comes to your rescue, and your negligence causing manslaughter will land you in the deepest pit in hell where they have Kanye West's cover of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody on repeat. Just killed a man. That's horrible. So don't do this at home. Now we'll have high voltage as What the hell? Did I short something? Okay. Retry. So don't do this at home. Now as soon as I turn on this What the these days. Maybe the transformer is broken. Let's get another one. This kind of wall adapter starts with a transformer that reduces the AC voltage. Don't try this at home. Now as soon as you... Why? What's going on? Why can't I flip the sides? Why have something to do with the inductance? I have to measure the inductance now. I have to get an LCR meter. Stay tuned, I'll get back to you. Hey, I'm back. I got an LCR meter from Circuit Specialist as usual, and this thing is around $60 and pretty much does everything. It measures not only inductance, capacitance, and resistance, but also AC and DC voltage and current, diode, HFE of transistor, frequency up to 10 MHz, and even comes with a thermocouple to measure temperature. I checked its functionalities and all work well so far. I'll leave a link in my video description if you need one. Also, I think it makes a good gift, so I'll give away 10 of these to my viewers and patrons at the end. Okay, let's measure the inductance. The primary is around 1.35 Henry, which is nice and large, but the secondary is around 6.4 milli Henry. So the impedance of the secondary is around 2.4 ohms only, which means at 120 volt AC we get 50 amps of current. 50 amp is huge! No wonder these keep arcing and blowing off. So I can't use these on the 60 Hz 120 volt AC city power. But I'm pretty sure if I increase the frequency and lower the voltage limiting the current, I should be able to use them. Let's try it. I'm giving a 1 kHz 1 volt amplitude signal to the secondary of the transformer, which is now our primary. And at the output, I'm reading 15 volts amplitude. See, I'm not totally crazy. Just that for high voltage 60 Hz, we need a different transformer. Which I have one, I scavenged it from a microwave oven in my other video. Now the inductance of the primary is around 37 millihenry. That means at 60 Hz, 
I'll have around 14 ohms of impedance and at 120 volt AC it means 8 amps of current into primary. Still not very small, but I guess it's not large enough to trip a breaker. So let's power it up. But this outputs around 2000 volts and with so much power available, this is definitely a killer like... Like who? Tell me! Like your magnificent smile. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's nice. I Averted. Okay. No, no explosions. Uh, now if we measure the current into the primary, we'll see it's around 7.5 amps, even with no load. Now you might think that power is voltage times current, so 7 amps times 120 volts is 840 watts of wasted energy, but that's not correct. Unlike resistors that voltage and current are in phase, an ideal inductor causes 90 degrees current phase shift. If you look in this area, voltage and current are both same direction like a resistor, which means the inductor is pulling energy from the power line. But then here, the direction of current and voltage is opposite. It means the inductor has turned into a generator and is putting energy back into the power line. This push and pull of power results in a net zero power consumption in an ideal inductor. But then again, the power lines or the primary of the inductor have some inherent resistance, as well as the core of the transformer humming like crazy. All these waste power, somewhere around a couple of watts. So in general, it's not a good idea to keep these plugged in. Now let me measure the output of the transformer. I'm using a resistor divider to step down the voltage first to protect my multimeter. Now if we measure that, it is... Make sure the resistors you pick are rated for the power you will put across them. Now forget about the resistor divider. Let's use this variac or variable transformer from circuit specialists. It will reduce my voltage so I can safely measure it. Okay. I set the input to 10 volt and the output is 200 volt AC. This means that the transformer number of turn ratio is around 20. So at 120 volt AC input, I'll have around 2400 volt AC output. I say that's pretty good to make Lichtenberg figures. So here's what we need. A piece of wood, put two nails in it, Wet the surface with a mixture of water and baking soda to make it conductive. Connect the output of the transformer to the nails. Maybe put it on a piece of glass so you won't burn your table. Okay, let's slowly raise the voltage and see what happens. Yeah, there is something. No! Oh, this is not water and baking soda, it is lighter fuel. Always read the labels. In any case, this looks like a dangerous experiment to be done indoors. Let's go into the kitchen. Okay, let's make some Lichtenberg. I think my choice of wood was poor. Seems like it's going mostly on the inner layers. Masterpiece, isn't it? One more try. More liquid. Thank you, Breaker. I think the problem is I'm not an artist. At least a bit of it looks nice. Give away time! Thanks to circuit specialists, I can give away